this I got for Christmas. The clutch, pneumatic hammer. It's one of those you got off Amazon, I think it was. I'm gonna give it a review. Styrofoam, I hate it already. Well, let's go and take a look. Instructions, don't need them. If you could take people who use styrofoam still and throw them in a volcano, it would be awesome. Package of bullshit. <laughs> First thing, just looking at some of these welds here, um, the joke would be an understatement. This one looks like they totally missed the. Uh, gap all together. Let's get a nice little uh, adjustment guy here. This is a bit of a joke. A little plastic cap to fill the thing with sand. It can make it more rigid. Oh boy. Put a weld here. Oh my god. Thought there's some uh, quality craftsmanship there. Yeah, sort of missed the mark on that one. And this little uh, adjustment guy, I imagine that falling off almost instantly. Well, let's assemble it and hope that goes well. And give it a couple tests. The hammer itself uh, is a real mini design. I actually do like this. This is kind of handy. It's got a machined uh, spot in there for it to fit in. Of course, it doesn't fit. It's that screw here. Those are three guys. Assuming these are one inch radius, two inch radius, three inch radius. It's got a nice little holder here for them. Actually not too bad of a design, I'm sure. Relatively universal. This hammer seems all right. I don't know why it needs an O-ring for it, but we'll go ahead and leave that there. This is where I should have read the instructions, I guess.
adjustment pin here. The foot pedal itself is actually pretty decent construction. It's all metal. Not really find any problems. Nice rubber hose. This hose, uh, well, seems questionable. Maybe we some child's pool toy or something. I don't know. We'll see what it does. super robust but it does indeed move it now after seeing how it works would I recommend buying one for $150 it's kind of a hard deal to pass up at least they get you the parts plan on doing some finished welding now let's see what we can do to improve it Getting of something. So this is what I got cut out on the table here. Sort of an overlay. I'll take and cut all these off, repurpose them, weld them to here, and box all this in. Got a nice little cold front coming in. Currently about 25 degrees outside. Luckily I have my Mighty shop heater to keep me. Yeah, I laugh at that, but uh, yeah. Got the two sides down here, now I'll box it all in and weld it together. So I'm going to end up stealing some of this stuff here. The best way to keep this aligned when I cut this apart, I'm gonna cut it here and cut it here. I'll weld a piece of tubing or something to these to keep them square. That way when it's cut free, everything lines back up the way it's supposed to. And there you go, everything left over. That'll go right into the scrap bin. So I need to be able to line these up when I weld them together. So the easiest way is to put some indexing holes. I'll drill these and sling a bolt or some all thread or something through there to keep them um, uh, lined up while it's
made these little all thread spacers now I'll bolt it all together Starting to look like something. So I got everything spaced together. This I have a one and a half inch strap, which I'll take and weld and box the whole thing in. Went ahead and put a piece of strap here to line everything up while I weld it. And on that note, I'm going inside. It's too damn cold. Instead of doing the one and a half inch strap to box it all in, I decided to cut something a little bit bigger. These are two and a half by three. So it'll kind of taper towards the back. I think it'll get a little more girth and look, you know, better. Get these all cleaned up. I'm using 316's hot roll. I used to use the pickled and oiled, but it's gotten so darn expensive that the metal yard actually stopped selling it. So this is currently where I'm at. I got the head tacked in place. I got the top piece tacked in place. Now I'll just finish fitting everything and assembling it. Uh, rather time consuming. Got it all tacked in place. Ready to do the inside now. Take and grind all those welds and finish behind it with the TIG machine and it'll be ready for paint. So just like about got the grinding done um, and I was thinking instead of using this sort of cheesy locking setup that they had on there I'm gonna go ahead and weld the bung in the bottom here and use this water wheel that I got to adjust the shaft up and down to just fine-tune it It'll work a hell of a lot better right so I got that all welded in now it's time to put it on the stand I got this base here that I got from some sort of body shop not sure what it's used for, but it'll work great. So I've been trying to figure out how to square this thing up before I weld it. I found out the best way, at least in my theory, is to lay it flat on its back, 
put a level on the tube, and then square up the top portion. So I got my levels on there, everything looks good, and I'll uh, get the hot glue gun and make it permanent. So this is the wheel I'm going to use to adjust the bottom. This is actually a handle off a valve that I got from a job site one day. Just for opening and closing a big hand water valve. So I need to put a lock nut, like a jam nut on here so everything stays. So I scrounged around the uh, parts bin and I found this nice big chunk of brass. So, you know, why not make it pretty? So I drilled it and tapped it to screw on there. So I just need to figure out how to weld a, like a T-handle kind of a deal. I've never welded brass, so um, I'll see how that goes. There we go, pre-assembled. Need to take it apart and do all the <clears throat> finishing so I can get it prepped for paint. Final assembly, put it through the test. Got it primed up, just about got the body work on it done. Uh, I wouldn't call it body work, but just, you know, general cleanup. That's my 40 coupe in the background. That'll be uh, getting chopped in a future episode. Here in the world's smallest shop, 24 by 24 of magic. Digging through the old paint cabinet here. I got me a little hot rod flats urethane. Whatever the hell color that is. In my $12 tool store paint gun. Tools of the trade, my friends, tools of the trade. Scrounge around, I did find some clear, so that'll be handy. I'm sure my workbench looks just as, uh, well, nice as yours. In the meantime, I did cut out a little tool holder that I'm gonna bolt to the side there. Hold the different heads and pieces and stuff. 
This over here is a one of those needle, tiny little hammer. That's actually going to be a future episode where it'll be a handheld planche and hammer. Well, if I can get it to work anyway. Not quite the candy up a red I was shooting for, but I think more of a cranberry. Ooh, that baby pops in the sun. So after drooling over this, but how well it looks in the sun, kind of start the pre-assembly. And I do notice, I knew that kind of going in that this was, the handle was going to be in the way. So I think I'm gonna cut that handle off rework it just a touch. Doesn't really have much of anything in there other than drilling tapping that. I don't know, I'll take it apart and find out. And I'll take a little bit more because it's got that notch there. Hopefully there's enough meat in there I can drill and tap. I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> Hit the grinder with that thing. So I'll need to drill and tap that, and I have this, oh, what is this, quarter inch by 18. Oh, look, made in Japan, that's gotta be good. Uh, so drill and tap that for, uh, take and return that fitting back in there, and I think it'll be good.
Now, I know in reality, I should be getting a better vise one of these days. But this thing is so darn cool. It's a Columbia Cleveland from, uh, best I can tell, pre-war. And it is hell of used up. Has almost an inch of slop in the jaws. It's had a three-quarter inch plate welded to it as a workstation, which is pretty cool because it's got each of the corners is a different radius for, you know, fabrication. A couple holes drilled in it. The edges are mitered and mounted on a Model AA truck wheel. Uh, it is probably the most useful thing that I have in my shop. Took a little plane with it, but finally got it so it fits just right. <laughs> You'll notice I'm outside right now, because despite of when I started this project, three days later, it's now 80 degrees here in uh, Austin, Texas, which is a lot better than the 11 degrees it was when I started this project. Now let's do some final assembly and give this thing a test. on tape. Still have this weird pool hose on here, but I'll deal with that again a different day. This is a sheet of aluminum here. Let's find my hearing protection.
So there it is, finished product. I'll probably be offering this frame uh, in a kit on my website at some point, or you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and every other social media. Thanks for watching. Oh, you sexy, sexy beast.